Ozzy here. How's everybody doing? Today we're going to take a look at Enbridge, one of the lar largest operators of oil and gas pipelines and energy infrastructure in North America. So if we take a look here at a map that's probably going to be pretty tough to uh, to see and uh, and run through, but you get you get the sense here. Uh, you get the big picture. Uh, this company has uh, significant assets across North America, whether it's transporting, distributing uh, oil, gas assets um, across both Canada and the United States. And wow, there is a uh, there's a lot to talk about with this stock. Um, again, we're going to look at some of the recent developments as well as the longer term results. I'm going to review the quarterly results, the conference call, the annual report, the investor presentation. And after the first video on Starbucks, I thought it ran a little bit long. So what I'm going to try and do uh, for this one is split the video into three parts. Uh, the first is, is going to be, you know, we'll take a look at the stock chart. Uh, and then we'll also take a look at the financial highlights, sort of long-term financial highlights. And then in part two, in the second video, we'll dive into the rest of the rest of the analysis. And lastly, in part three, that's where we'll tie it all together with uh, some key considerations and the triple B, the, the bull case, the bear case and the base case. Uh, so without further ado, why don't we why don't we dive into Enbridge and let's just pull up the stock chart here. Um, so note, I've got the NYSE listing. So we're showing the US dollar uh, stock price chart here uh, going back over five years. And you can see it, uh, it has not been a great performer uh, over the last at least, let's say three years. Uh, stock price got up to about as high as almost $55 US, dropped down as low as about $30 US just recently. And we're starting to notice a nice pick back up uh, in just in over the last month, maybe in a couple weeks, back up to about $35. Um, so what are some of the key drivers here? There, there's a lot going on with this stock and we'll we'll dive into it in more detail in, in the second video. But some of the key drivers you've probably heard in the news lately, uh, the Line 3 expansion, which is one of their biggest, if not the biggest expansion projects. Uh, I think it's close to $10 billion. Um, it did finally uh, just receive the go-ahead uh, along their preferred route. So there was a lot of uncertainty in the market as to whether, I mean, it, it's, it's hard to get any pipeline approved these days. And uh, Enbridge was certainly no exception with their Line 3 expansion project. Uh, they were running into a lot of difficulty, but it does, at least from an approval perspective, seem like they've got all the approvals. They are uh, along their preferred route. And, and that's probably one of the reasons why you see the stock price sort of pop uh, just in the last week or two here. Uh, I think the market was concerned that that they either were not going to gain uh, the right approvals or uh, there was a sort of a second case there where they might get the approval to move forward, but on a different route that would be a lot more costly uh, to Enbridge to implement. So that's one. Number two, a big thing uh, with the stock and the story is leverage. Uh, they made a large acquisition, uh, I want to say about a year and a half ago, Spectra Energy. And uh, as we'll see in our financial highlights, they took on a lot of debt to do that. And some are concerned that uh, I think they've got a little over $60 billion, uh, $60 billion of debt. And a lot, you know, some observers are concerned that maybe that's a little bit too much leverage. Uh, and there's not a lot of room for error. So uh, that'll be something else that we'll take a look at. And then alongside the leverage, you know, the company's announced its intention to sell off some non-core assets. So I think if you look maybe four or five years back, maybe even a little bit further, it was starting to expand into renewable energy, offshore wind projects, um, looking for other you know ways to grow. And it seems to be retracting from that now and wants to go back into a pure play uh, pipeline company utility company and uh, it's looking to sell off some assets and and pay down debt and sort of bring leverage back back in line um, and then the last point that I'll talk about here on on the stock uh, stock price chart is just management I think as we dive into our analysis 
we'll see that man management's probably in the penalty box a little bit here. I think this is a, this is a management team uh, and a company that has a pretty strong track record. You know, we'll see um, track record of dividend growth, project execution, and and recently, and some of this is outside of their control, it's a really tough environment to get pipelines approved and growth projects approved. Um, so it's just a tough business to be in right now in that regard. Uh, but also, you know, I think some of the, you know, management guidance has been, has, has been tweaked, uh, you know, dividend growth. Uh, I think some of the, some observers are concerned that, um, the dividend growth that management's promising may not, uh, ultimately be able to be delivered. And, um, recent results, you know, post the Spectra Energy acquisition, it's, uh, Enbridge doesn't do a great job at actually showing some of these per share results, and I don't blame them because it's not something you want to brag about, but you will see some of these profitability and free cash flow per share metrics have come off. Uh, they issued substantial amount of, of equity and new shares in the Spectra acquisition and took on a lot of debt, and the results for the last fiscal year anyway um, weren't stellar. Um, so that doesn't necessarily mean that going forward, it's not a good place to be. But if those are probably three of the key things. So just to recap, line three expansion, which it looks like they've just got the green light to move ahead, leverage and the amount of debt on the balance sheet and whether they're going to be able to fund their growth capital uh, without further diluting shareholders. And then lastly, just the management team, uh, probably a little bit in the penalty box here. So that's, I'll leave it there in terms of the stock price chart. And then let's just move into the financial highlights. All right, so here we are in the annual report again. I always like to jump right into the annual report, um, get the numbers right from the source. Uh, so here, I believe on page 61, they've got a nice summary of the five-year data. Uh, you can see here revenue over the last five years, operating revenues gone up from about 32.9 million or billion, sorry, uh, to 44.4 in 2017. Um, note there that 2017 was the first almost full year of uh, Spectra results being included. So this isn't really organic growth here. Uh, if you look back at 2016 and, and previously, that'll probably give you a better picture of of the revenue for just just Enbridge. Of course, they've always got growth pro projects on the go, and there could be some minor acquisitions there. But the big Spectra acquisition is is really what is most likely driving that 2017 growth. So from a high level, revenue has gone up from 32.9 billion to 44.4. Um, distributable cash flow DCF. Now, this is a metric that we'll see when we jump into uh, their investor presentation and their quarterly releases and their street guidance, which is really a sort of a free cash flow per share metric um, that um, that management has guided investors towards. And that's really the funds that are going to be available to pay out the dividend. Um, as we'll note for a pipeline company like Enbridge, there's going to be significant depreciation uh, that we'll want to look into. So earnings, earnings may not be the best metric here um, to look at. We'll want to look at both, obviously, but uh, Enbridge has an ability through their tolling uh, you know, if you look at the line three expansion and upgrade, they're essentially going to be able to charge uh, their customers for any upgrades to their their assets and systems. So it's actually a really nice business model if you think about depreciation um, in the typical uh, way we would uh, once those assets have been used up, whether it's equipment or otherwise. Um, it would be up to the business to fund those, you know, through capital expenditures and uh, using their free cash flow to um, replace those assets. And, and that type of depreciation is very real. Uh, in this case, you know, the depreciation may be quite real, but uh, Enbridge is in a privileged position of being able to almost pass on the cost of updating its, uh, its pipeline network to its customer base and anyway that's a very simplified version but i actually do believe that looking at more of a 
a free cash flow per share here and backing out the depreciation might be a good place to start. But always want to look at both and, uh, and look at earnings and get a sense and not just gloss over it. So uh, DCF is not shown here, not a gap measure. Uh, if you look at earnings, you know, there's a significant amount of revenue to drive, you know, pretty thin earnings at the end of the day. Um, looking at, you know, half a billion dollars in 2013 to 1.2 billion down to almost flat in 2015, 1.8 billion and then 2.5 billion last year. So there's a lot going on here. Um, and when we do our detailed review, we'll jump into what's what's driving that, that sort of variation because Enbridge is sort of known as a, a steady a steady dividend uh, growth stock, and those earnings numbers wouldn't really um, wouldn't really suggest that at first glance. So we'll jump into that a little bit in the second video, and then if you look at the earnings per share here, you know fifty five cents up to dollar thirty seven. Again, negative. You're going to see the exact same trend here, and so we'll really have to look behind these numbers to to see what's happening. Um, but one thing to note, and I, I suggested it uh, earlier on in the video, the earnings per share dropped uh, from last year, a dollar ninety-three, down to a dollar sixty-five. And if we even look at, I, I pulled the numbers quickly here. The DCF, even if you look at distributable cash flow per share, uh, they used to call this available funds from operations. Uh, so they've changed sort of their, uh, the way that they present um, the per share cash flow information a little bit over time, but roughly um, this was about $4 a share back in 2016, and it went down to $3.68 in 2017. And then their guidance for 2018 is $4.30. So Thinking back to the stock price being under pressure over the last year, year and a half, a big part of that is the dilution that came with the Spectra Energy acquisition and this right here, this $3.68 um, of DCF relative to what they had put up the previous year. And so obviously uh, investors want to see growing earnings and cash flow on a per share basis over time. And so a little bit of a blip for, for Enbridge in the last year. And then if we jump down to dividends per share, you can see here uh, really nice dividend growth over time. So $1.26, $1.40, $1.86, $2.12, and then $2.41. Interesting to note here, this $2.41 is significantly greater uh, than their earnings per share. Uh, so again, we'll jump into that. Really more than likely want to think about this on a DCF uh, basis, but we'll jump into that in our analysis video. And then lastly, just point out the total assets, total assets and then long-term debt. So you can see a little bit of the increased leverage that we were talking about earlier. Back in 2013, this company had $57 billion of assets and $22 billion of debt. And if you look at 2017 figures, they've tripled the asset base and they've doubled it really in one year with that Spectra acquisition. So we've gone from... 57 billion of assets to 162 billion. And at the same time, they've tripled the amount of debt on the business. So now you've got a business with over $60 billion of, of debt. And, and I think that's what's got some uh, some observers a little bit concerned that, that maybe they've bitten off a little bit more than they can chew. And then the last point, uh, just looking at the volume growth over time, I think on page 72 here, we can do that. There we go. Just throughput volume. You know, they're they're really in a tolling business. Uh, looking at the amount of of uh, barrels of equivalent oil per day BPDs that are going through their their system, both the Canadian mainline and their Lakehead system, over the last few years, you can see that there's been nice volume growth. Now, I haven't gone back before 2015. Because uh, uh, just to see if if the 2015 was a down year, 2015 I, I believe was a tough year for oil and gas stocks. But if you look at just the last three years, uh, there's been nice volume growth here. So there is a bit of an organic growth story at least over the last three years. So that's 
that's all we'll say for now for video number one. Uh, hopefully that's a good introduction. We talked a little bit about the stock price chart. We showed sort of what's been happening. And then we looked high level at the financials here. Really important to note with Enbridge that that high level overview that we just did, and I'll just jump back there. These numbers um, are not really the numbers that Enbridge management is, is, uh, is guiding investors towards. It's a lot more on a free cash flow uh, per share basis. And so we'll have to jump in behind these numbers and, and look at uh, management's way of presenting the data, which will probably be a more accurate uh, representation of the business and how it's performing. But again, I always want to start with uh, what's in the annual report um, so that we're not biased in our view. So with that, um, we'll sign off for now. And video two will be back with the full in-depth uh, analysis. Thanks for watching.